time you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to leave those in the comments section, and we will address those at the end of today's webinar. During today's webinar, we're going to cover a few things. Um, one of the following is the impact of turnover, how poor retention affects your team, you and your community. We'll discuss what we call uh, four retention drivers, factors whose absence or presence affects retention, what your role as a leader plays in the part of retention, and how you can proactively influence those retention drivers. Finally, we'll close with the introduction of some retention tools. Um, the things that provide you the opportunity to identify specific actions you can take to address areas of dissatisfaction. Unfortunately, at some point in your career, whether um, as a manager, supervisor, executive director, whatever your position may be, um, you have probably felt the effects of turnover and what those impacts of those um, effects of turnover can have on your community, can have on yourself, can have on as uh, your other staff. Recruiting, recruiting costs. We all know that turnover comes with a cost, and a lot of that comes with the recruiting, the training new people, um, the um, effect that it has on overall staff morale. Um, as far as recruiting costs, depending on the position, Research says replacing a person can easily cost 29 to 46% of that person's salary. So when we think about that number, um, certainly that plays a huge impact on the community. Training. Um, obviously, with uh, turnover comes new employees, new hires, and the time and cost it takes to train new people. Not only the time of your current staff, but your time as well your time to train, but also your time to recruit. And uh, we all know how um, much time that can take as well. So certainly with that, we know that and probably have experienced, especially with our residents, that change to them is often um, something that doesn't come easily for them. So any sort of change, and um, especially with the person that they're used to seeing on a daily basis, can certainly have a negative impact on resident service. Finally, that effect of, again, extra work for your others while waiting while that position is unfilled, which can lead to even more turnover. It can lead to their dissatisfaction. Um, so uh, again, uh, it difficulties retaining them. Certainly, losing talented, experienced people affects not only your community to meet its goals, it affects the people who remain with the organization, and most of all, the critical piece, the residents. So how do we retain our employees? Before we figure that out, how to keep people, you have to understand why, why do people leave their jobs? And as a leader, you've probably held several different jobs yourself in your employment history. And chances are you've probably left at least one of those voluntarily. What were those interests or expectations that were not being addressed in your former job that you caused you to want to change? I would assume those same expectations and interests that caused you to change are the reasons why others, your staff, um, are causing them to have a change as well. We've looked at such things as, I left my former job because I needed more of a challenge. I was bored. Again, that's short-staffed, overworked. There was no room for advancement. I was stuck in the position that I had. Wanted higher salary, didn't trust my job, my boss, my, excuse me. You will notice on the flip side of getting a new job, there are some common threads in those lists and what makes people leave and what attracts people. So I needed more of a challenge, I found more of a challenge in my new job. I was bored, I find an opportunity to work on a team. Lacked room for advancement, my new job provided me advancement. These common threads are called retention drivers. And when we look at these things, we want to understand and feel, could your manager, could you, could your previous boss have controlled or at least influenced any of these items? 
With the exception of comp compensation, which research again has found that that's not the most commonly cited reasons for leaving, all these things, was bored, needed more challenge, didn't trust my boss, all could have been controlled or influenced by you, the leader, or your previous manager. Many of those same interests and expectations important to people can be grouped into four categories of retention drivers, meaningful work, organization, people, and development. Again, if you recall from the previous slide, board, distrust, all, all those things can fall into one of those categories, again, with the exception of salary, again, cited that that's not the highest reason why people leave. You as a leader is where the direction really starts and the support comes from. They need to know that their interests, their needs are um, directed towards you. You have interest in them. You're building trust, supporting them. These all lead to the four retention drivers. For example, meaning for work. People need to know what they most what they do is going to be successful in their jobs and that what they do is important. What's expected of them? Do you have the right person at the right job? Are you matching talent to skill level? Do they know that their job, their work that they're doing isn't meaningful? Are they writing out their goals? Are they being assessed? Organization. Provide your staff members the opportunity for people to be proud of where they work and what they do. Do you know that? Are you doing any types of surveys, workplace surveys? Communication. We all hear that communication is one thing that we can all build on. And I often hear that it's communication where the organization is going. What are the organizational goals? Once we know that and once the staff member knows that, they feel like they're, um, they're more valued. They provide more value to the organization. Are you providing a to total compensation? to them? Do they feel and understand exactly what it is um, that you're providing to them outside of just salary? People. For most people, relationships are more important than work itself. People want to work with coworkers that value and show respect in return. So we often spend, for most of us, 70, 80 percent of our time at work. So if, uh, we want to make sure that the relationships, the people that we're surrounded by, we're building trust, valuable relationships. Is there opportunity for you to train? Reward programs. Again, surrounding, making an environment comfortable for your people. Development. This is often one that is, is highly recognized by employees when they leave, but often forgotten about. Again, people want to know that they can develop new skills and knowledge in their jobs. With that, again, what type of training are you providing them to extend their knowledge and what they're currently doing? Do, is there opportunity for growth, advancement? All those elements that we talked about in our previous slide as to why people look for other employment. As a leader, we know you have many demands on your time. And we know and we saw the effects of what retention does on turnover, cost-wise what it does to your resident satisfaction, um, training, um, the effect that it has on your current employees. But retention efforts need to be higher in pr your priority. And you can't just address the situations of individuals in your work group at once. You have to recognize and deal with one person at a time. Your initial retention efforts should focus on people who both provide significant, significant value to the community and that are likely to leave. Think about an individual in your work group and decide how many of these statements best describe this person. The person's expertise, knowledge, and experience are, are a significant asset to the team community. If the person leaves, no one could step into the role quickly. Feedback on this person for residents, team members, is usually positive. The person's performance ratings are generally high. The person likes change. However, the person is particularly not loyal to the organization. How many times have we found that, that all these particular factors, you could 
put a check mark by. However, the next two weeks we find out that they have given their resignation and we're asking ourselves why. And most times we find that we put it on the employee. Well, gosh, you should have told me that you were unhappy. I had no idea. This presentation is set to, to identify that it's the leader's responsibility to make sure that we're supporting all those four retention drivers. So this is just a starting place to help you weigh who might be likely to leave, who might leave a big hole, or if he or she did. We all know that there are positions that um, have more weight on the organization than others. And it's just as critical that you do not ignore anyone who is meeting job expectations. Certainly, um, if we go through this checklist, and again, we can see that, yes, they're meeting our expectations, but still find out that they're unhappy. Um, we need to concentrate on those as well. Retaining every person who is contributing to the success, success of the community is your responsibility. Like I said, it's always worse to find out after the fact. What can we do before they get to looking elsewhere? I mentioned in our agenda we had some retention tools that you can use, and certainly we'll show here in just a second my email address, and please let me know if you, if you would like these tools. They're a great opportunity for all of those four retention drivers to give you um, samples, ideas of things to help build meaningful work, to help build um, their understanding of their organizational needs, to help make sure that they're in a comfortable environment, that they're trusted um, and valued by the people that they work with. And then finally, to help make sure that there is um, an opportunity for growth, or at least to have conversations for development. Again, all four factors that start with you as a leader, you can influence. So not only with that, um, that is the um, handout there on the left, but not only with that, it's understanding it's starting those dialogue conversations. Again, so you're not finding out after the fact, gosh, I had no idea. Um, probing questions. What am I doing that is helpful? What am I not doing? Do you need more support from me? How can I better recognize your contributions? Um, again, playing on all those four retention um, drivers, meaningful work, making them feel um, that they're important to the organization. So use this material to identify specific actions that you can take to help close those gaps between what people value and what they present in their jobs. It lists retention drivers, its definitions, some best practicing, as I said, for improving that driver. And then once you know what driver maybe needs to be worked on the most, how do you do that? It's through those probing questions. At this time, I want to open it up for any questions that you may have or any interest in the um, two tools that we identified at the end of the presentation. My email is there for you, christy.tarones at meritresources.com. I welcome you also to visit our, our website if you haven't already. We've wrapped up our session in a, sh a shorter amount of time, but certainly I do um, very much appreciate your attendance. Again, please feel free to email me if you have interest in the tools that were discussed. And we look forward to um, seeing you on our next webinar. Thank you for your time.